Step one, take out your metal three and a half. Get rid of all that bulk. Just follow through the parietal ridge and make sure that you don't take the clippers too high. You wanna leave yourself enough room to blend into the top of the hair. I like to use my comb to guide the hair into my detachable. Use the comb to get the fringe out of the way so I don't accidentally cut it and move those ears so you don't you know, accidentally bump into them. That's super uncomfortable. When you're working with kids, they tend to move a lot and you just have to be patient, you know? Um, it's a kid. Low key, kids cuts are awesome because one, it's a moving target. It's gonna give you really good practice. Two, they're the most loyal clients. And three, they're gonna let you do some crazy designs so you can expand your catalog. Do you wear your hair forward or do you come it over? To the right side? Uh, okay. It's always a good practice to ask your client how they wear their hair because that's going to dictate how you cut it, obviously. But I think that sometimes if you're in a rush, you forget that. In your consultation, there's a few things that you want to cover. How they wear their hair, ask them for a picture if they've got one. You just want to ask as many questions as you need to be able to completely visualize the finished product. You don't wanna be playing a guessing game. You wanna know exactly what you wanna do and what the client wants so that you can get straight to the point instead of giving three haircuts and one haircut. Some clients don't know what they want and some clients don't know how to even articulate what they want even if they did know what they wanted. Nine times out of 10, a client just wants a fade on the sides and a trim on top. But depending on the way that their hair lays, you're going to use different guard lengths to be able to accommodate their hair so that it blends properly. For example, if they have a little bit of a cowlick in the back, a little bit of curl like this kid has, you're not going to want to run a number one all the way up to the parietal ridge and try to blend that because it's going to stick out. You know, that's why I started this haircut with a two and a half. When I'm working around the crown, I start just taking off about a half an inch and I comb it to see how it lays. And as I comb it, I'm looking for, is it starting to lift? Is it starting to stick out at all? And you'll find that sweet spot. The more that you cut hair, the more that you'll be able to identify where that sweet spot is and you can get to it quicker each time. Once you hit that sweet spot, keep it pushing. Use that as a guide and work your way to the front of the hair. I'm dry cutting the top, and normally I wouldn't do this. I'd like to wet it because then I can get more consistent of a cut. The only reason I decided to cut Evan's hair dry in the beginning was because I've cut his hair so many times that I get bored of doing the same exact thing. So I like to switch it up, and in switching it up, there's an opportunity to learn something. The way that you section your subsections is gonna dictate how the hair gets cut. So and I'm, I'm using a little bit of point cutting to get rid of some weight, but without blunt cutting it. And then follow that up with a little bit of shear over comb, follow that up with a little bit of 90 degree cutting. The direction that you pull out a subsection is going to dictate the direction that the hair is going to go when you let it lay. As I'm combing it and cutting the top, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just getting rid of all of the bulk that I can dry cutting. And then I'm going to follow that up with some wet cutting at the end of the haircut. The benefit of dry cutting is that you can see how everything lays. Since this is a pretty big design, I'm starting with an open wall. Normally, I would do a skin fade for a design just because I like the way that the contrast looks. But since this design is larger and the star hits the bottom of the fade, I want to leave enough room so that the design is still visible at the bottom. One thing about kids is that their skin actually has more elasticity. And so what that'll do for the hair stream is sometimes the hair will hug the scalp. Stretching it helps the hair protrude straight out so that it's easier to fade and easier to cut. After my open wall, I'm using a number one to knock out some weight. So I'll start all the way open and go about an inch above the guideline and scoop out and then as I do that I also close it but I'm listening to the clippers and that gives me a frame of reference how far are you moving your clippers with each stroke you know you want to keep your 
your strokes very tight when you're using a smaller clipper guard because the effect is going to be a lot more drastic. More so when you're working with curly hair or ethnic hair, it's super important to comb or brush the hair down as you cut it because you know, if, if you go up against the grain, you're going to make the hair stick in a different direction than it naturally lays. Cutting hair is a lot like drawing with an eraser. When you're just going straight up and down, that's like using the biggest size eraser that you can. But then that circle, or if you, you know, you had a digital eraser, that circle starts to shrink when you just use the corners of your clipper. Whenever you're working with a kid, you gotta be a lot more light-handed, especially with your trimmers. Whenever I'm working around the ear, I always stretch the skin, and that gives me a lot more breathing room to work around that ear. The inside of the ear towards the front is the most common place to accidentally nick somebody, and it's because that skin is really elastic, and it easily gets caught in between the teeth in your clippers and so you just have to be careful you know give it some breathing room and better if you just lay that ear as flat as you can so that you don't get into that groove by accident it's also really easy to accidentally cut the top of the ear with a double foil shaver so just give that ear some breathing room don't use that double foil shaver right on top of that groove I'm doing this neck taper with a little bit of a bubble. So I would call this like a concave neck taper. And you can also do a convex neck taper. And both of them have slightly different effects. The way that I'm doing it, it kind of gives the neck taper a little bit more contour, which I like. A convex neck taper would look a lot more natural. That's when I would round the back with my trimmer and then fade that up. But I like the concave because it just gives the haircut more contour, which will complement the design nicely. Why don't you do it a little bit shorter like so that... You won't even notice, dude. Yeah, you'll want it a little shorter so that we're not back to Rocco in like a hot second. You know, you know I love you guys. <laughs> we love you, Rocco, but we don't need to see you next week. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing some point cutting into the bangs and I'm not really taking a lot off, just enough so that he doesn't have to come back right away. But if I was to just blunt cut the bangs, then it would look like a bowl cut, which nobody likes. So now I'm starting my design and I've drawn stars quite a few times, so I'm just freehanding it. And really, it's kind of like two triangles on top of each other. Um, but I'm just trying to, you know, take my time and get the angles right. Because if you don't get the angles right, then it throws off the proportion of the star, which sucks. Once I get the rough design in there, then I'll follow that up with making it a little bit thicker so that the design pops out a little bit more. And then I can follow that up with a straight edge razor to get rid of some of that stubble. But when you're using a straight edge on a design, you gotta be careful, you know, because the skin's already sensitive, you just put a trimmer on it. So I would highly recommend spraying some water on it and that'll help the blade glide. Or you can use some shave gel, or if you have a lather machine, that works out really well too. If I wasn't feeling confident about doing this star, then I would first draw it on a post-it note, and then that would help me figure out how I want to attack it. When it comes to holding the trimmer, there's something that you have to be mindful of, that angle. If you put the trimmer on the scalp and you bring the blade to a, a 90 degree angle, that's gonna cut the least amount of hair possible, and that's a lot easier for when you're working on like some kind of a curve or some kind of fine details you just want to use the very corner of you know only the first tooth of your trimmer the more flat that you bring that trimmer the more hair that you're going to cut so you got to be mindful of that you don't want to accidentally overshoot 
if you're working in a detailed area, but it's something that just takes practice. When it comes to doing line work, if I follow through just a little bit, then that's going to bring the line to a point. As you're drawing your design, every once in a while you got to step back and slow down and make sure that you're getting all of your proportions right. Sometimes the image that you have in your head comes out differently in a haircut. So you just got to take your time with it. Look at the angle that I'm holding my trimmer. It's almost entirely 90 degrees and I'm doing that because I'm working in a really detailed area. So I don't want to overshoot it. Remember how I said before, the more flat that you leave your trimmer, the more hair at a time that you're going to cut. There isn't any rules when it comes to the angle that you hold your trimmers. You just got to experiment and figure out what works for you. One of the most important things when it comes to designs is just making sure that you maintain good posture because you're so focused in on the design, it's very easy to forget that and you start to tilt your head forward and then you start to develop upper back pain and that sucks. After you have gotten good with your razor, you can afford to tilt it just ever so slightly so that you're only using the front of your razor but you just got to be careful because the more you tilt it the more prone you are to accidentally cutting your client typically when i do a design i like to use a white barber pencil just to add more contrast to it you could also use some hair color like dark brown hair color around the design to add that contrast but Using a barber pencil for enhancements is going to be a lot less messy and it's going to take a lot less time. Looking back at this design, I do see one thing that I would have changed, but that's what makes this fun, you know? This is the first time I've done this exact design, so I know that next time I do something like this, I will have another idea to make it even better. Now, if I had of just wet cut the hair from the get-go, then I would have been done the haircut by now. But like I said earlier, I was bored and I've cut his hair so many times I wanted to change it up and start by dry cutting the top and then refine it later. So I'm doing that refining, using my blending shears about halfway down the hair shaft and then just work my way towards the ends to get rid of a little bit of weight and make it a little bit more feathery and separated in the fringe area. And then I'm just doing some 90 degree cutting to make sure that everything's smoothed out in the rest of the hair. I'm using a paste and whenever I use paste, I always wet my hands first and then rub that paste into my hands until I don't have any clumps left because that'll keep it from clumping up when I apply it to the hair. The heat setting on your blow dryer is going to mold the hair the direction that you want it to go and then the cool setting is going to freeze that hair into place. After I've got that brushed, then I use my comb just to smooth everything out. And then I follow up with a trimmer to get those baby hairs out the way. I could have left it natural, but I wanted to clean up the forehead a little bit because I felt like it would just make the whole entire design a little bit cleaner overall. But a lot of parents will freak out if you go and give them a hard shape up because it just doesn't look right all the time. I mean, you don't want uh, every five-year-old kid to look like he's coming from North Philly. You know, like, not every kid, especially infants, need that hard shape up. Yeah, maybe if they're, like, ethnic, that would make more sense, but if you got a Caucasian baby that barely has any hair, and then you go and shape up their baby hairs, it's going to make them look like they have a barber that only knows one haircut. As always, I appreciate you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Till next time, peace.